A-A-Ron. Yeah. Why didn't you say it the first time I said A-A-Ron? Because it's pronounced Aaron. You done messed up, A-A-Ron! A-A-Ron is right here. Thanks for joining me, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. I wanna talk a little bit more about David Miscavige being served. I did a live video about this last night for about 15 minutes, but then I saw Mike Rinder also did a blog post about this, and he included some details that I had missed in the filing. I didn't totally understand where some of the testimony in the motion that was filed in this civil suit to, to rule David Miscavige served was coming from. And the source of that testimony makes all the difference. And testimony is probably the wrong word. I'm talking about excerpts that were taken from affidavits that were included in this motion. But let me just show you what Mike had to say about this. He says, David Miscavige, moment of reckoning. It would appear a moment of reckoning is upon the COB. COB is what Scientologists call David Miscavige. It's short for chairman of the board. Scientologists believe that David Miscavige is chairman of the board of an organization called RTC or Religious Technology Center. It is the organization that owns the trademarks of Scientology. What Scientologists don't actually know, and they probably wouldn't care to be honest, is that he's actually not on the board of RTC because he's so uh, paranoid about being served uh, that that's the reason he's not on the board, so that he can't be served through the corporation. So anyway, he goes on. For years, he has managed to avoid being served in any suit that has named him. Last night, the plaintiff's lawyers in the Baxter Paris case filed a motion to have the court find that Miscavige has been avoiding service and should be held in default. So, you know, quick catch up for those who may not know. Uh, the Baxter Paris case is a, a suit, a civil suit that's been brought by three former Scientologists, former Sea Org members who all worked on Scientology's cruise ship called the Free Winds. They are suing for labor traffic trafficking allegations and related matters. They are suing David Miscavige individually in addition to a handful of Scientology corporations. And this case is currently being heard in federal court uh, here in Tampa, near where I live. So uh, Mike says, he's been able to get away with his shenanigans for years, but I suspect the time for playing games with the court system is over, at least in this case. At the hearing last month, Judge Barber was not impressed with even the concept of this circus. When he reads the lengths Miscavige has gone in pretending that he is unaware of the legal case filed against him, which is what service is all about, ensuring someone has due notification of the proceeding. I suspect he will not appreciate the gamesmanship nor the wasting of his time on something that should be straightforward. Now, this is something that uh, when I read that, I go, yeah, that's common sense, but it hadn't quite occurred to me. I thought that it was somewhat acceptable for people to play games with the law as long as they were following the letter of the law, if not the spirit of the law. I thought it was actually fair play for Miscavige to kind of go through all these shenanigans to avoid being served. And that's just, uh, was just the nature of the beast of the legal system. But one thing that Mike talks about in this blog post and, and is actually expounded on even further in the filing itself is that service, that is not the point of requiring service. The point of requiring service is just to make sure that someone is actually aware of the legal proceedings against them. And all this other um, hoopla that Miscavige is doing to sort of avoid being officially served kind of um, ignores the main issue which is the point of service is just to make sure you know about the lawsuit. And the law doesn't actually allow for you to play games with whether somebody handed you a piece of paper or not. Anyway, it, it's kind of common sense, but it just hadn't quite occurred to me. Okay, so Mike continues on. The motion is detailed and self-explanatory. Uh, in my video yesterday, a lot of people asked me to link to the document. And so I'm gonna link to the document that Mike has posted on his blog. I'll put that in the description down below. He says, there are a few things in there that are especially noteworthy. He's talking about the motion that was filed now. Taken from signed affidavits of Lyman Spurlock, Mark Ingber, and Ann Josum, or Yosum, I'm gonna go with Josum, Marty Rathman's ex-wife, and Greg Wilhair, promoting how hands-on and directly involved Mr. Miscavige is and how he is on top of legal matters to protect Scientology. Okay, so uh, this is what I was talking about. In the motion, there are a bunch of excerpts from affidavits, and I mistakenly believe these affidavits to be from former Scientologists who were testifying uh, or who were swearing in an affidavit that Miscavige is intimately involved in the legal matters of Scientology. And yet, 
<laughs> and yet it turns out these affidavits are from Scientology's own senior executives, people who are still there to this day, people who work directly for David Miscavige, who in times past have sworn in affidavits just how active David Miscavige is in all of Scientology's legal matters. That, that gives those affidavits a completely new value that I had not previously understood. Mike continues, um, these affidavits are completely at odds with the idea that he hasn't got a clue what is going on. The lawyers representing RTC even claim they don't know his address. <laughs> <laughs> or how to contact him. Neither do any security guards at the doors of numerous Scientology buildings in Clearwater and Los Angeles, yet he lives and works in Scientology buildings exclusively. As a Sea Org member, he does not own his own home or have an outside office. Every security guard in every building in Clearwater knows where the COB is every minute of the day. The same when he's in Los Angeles or at the Int base or if he ever goes back to St. Hill. The farce of the invisible COB, he who shall not be named, is, I suspect, soon to be ended. The tantrums have no doubt already begun. So let me quickly read for you the excerpts from these affidavits from David Miscavige's own deputies um, swearing to Miscavige's involvement in all matters legal regarding Scientology. On July 28th, 2009, uh, senior Scientology executive, actually RTC executive, Lyman D. Spurlock declared in an affidavit, it's a long affidavit, but one applicable sentence is, in 1986, Mr. Miscavige decided enough was enough and set a course for ending all lawsuits so that we could devote our time and energies to expanding the religion. Okay, so I mean, it's referring to 1986, but it's still, this sentence at least indicates Miscavige was intimately involved in setting legal strategy for Scientology from his position of authority. Probably most damning is this excerpt from an affidavit or, or declaration completed by Ann Josem on July 28th, 2009. It says here, moreover, having worked for chairman of the board for 22 years, I know firsthand that Mr. Miscavige has always been working relentlessly to end all legal battles for the church so that he could concentrate his time and energy on the expansion of the Scientology religion. He has stated so more times than I can count in conversations with me. Okay, so Miscavige is not some ecclesiastical leader sitting in an ivory tower only concerning himself with matters of the faith. He is, uh, well, relentlessly working to end all legal battles. Uh, that sure indicates a hands-on approach uh, regarding anything with lawsuits. Here's another amazing excerpt from an affidavit completed on uh, the exact same date, interestingly enough, by Greg Wilhair one of the most senior and long-tenured executives um, of Scientology. It says, throughout the 1987 to 1993 time period, I've witnessed Mr. Miscavige almost single-handedly carry the ultimate responsibility of protecting and expanding, uh, and expanding the church and the Scientology religion. I witnessed hundreds of times Mr. Miscavige working with many executives and staff in all aspects and at all levels of the Scientology structure, from the very top to the very bottom in helping everyone to do do their jobs better. I also witnessed Rathbun and Rinder causing legal and PR debacles and then expecting Mr. Miscavige to save the day. Time and time again, Mr. Miscavige pleaded with them to get their areas under control. Well, aside from the sickening, fawning praise uh, from Mr. Wilhair, uh, sure seems to be painting a picture of, you know, M Miscavige doesn't only concern himself with certain matters, he's concerned with all matters at all levels and is apparently so involved in the legal sphere that the people in Scientology responsible for that sphere even expected Miscavige to come in and do their jobs for them. Well, that wouldn't even be possible unless Miscavige was constantly kept apprised of all things legal. And of course, that is the case. Not only is he kept constantly apprised of such matters, but he actually micromanages it down to the smallest detail. Guys, in these lawsuits where people are allowed to actually bring computers into the courtroom, you have Scientology operatives sitting there furiously uh, typing transcripts of everything that is happening and then leaving the courtroom to instantly send Miscavige live transcripts as, as live as possible of what's going on while he dictates legal strategy over the cell phone. I mean, this is honestly how 
much Miscavige micromanages uh, legal affairs and legal strategy. Uh, so there you have it, folks. Those are some of Mike Rinder's thoughts on this matter. Those are some of the fantastic excerpts of the affidavits from Miscavige's own people that at the end of the day are going to serve to to help sink Miscavige, at least as far as getting him officially served goes. And, uh, and there you have the actual declaration itself. Again, I will post that in the description down below. All right, everybody, that's all I got for now. Thank you for watching and listening. Thank you to everyone who watches until the very end, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see a, a different one of my videos, uh, oh, then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, 